Hi, my name is Brian and I'm the 3D print creator. And in this video I discuss with you the quality of my Artillery Sidewinder X1 printer after a few months of fairly intensive use. So if you want to see earlier videos I made about this specific pr uh, printer, then please visit my website via this link that you can find over here. Last few months I made more than 40 prints with my Artillery Sidewinder X1 printer. And what I noticed is that more or less every print was successful. I say more or less because, well, a few prints were not perfect, but they were still usable, even though they were not super beautiful. This was mainly because I had made a mistake in my slicer settings, and this had nothing to do with the printer itself. The first prints that I made uh, with this printer, they were made in PLA. This material prints great and it stays very well uh, attached to the bed. There is a good adhesion, it's very strong and sometimes it costs even exciting moments to release the print from the bed. But so far, well, <laughs> uh, it has all gone well. You won't have to be afraid, however, that PLA starts warping as long as you use the heated bed to start a print, because, well, it adheres very, very good. I have noticed that the diamond glass bed is different from, for example, the printer beds that I know from the, uh, well, the JJ Aurora A5 or the Anycubic i3 Mega, that kind of printers. Prints that you make with uh, these printers release very easily from the bed after, after the bed has cooled down, while with this Sidewinder the prints remain firmly attached to the bed even after cooling, and you have to give them a little knock to knock them off the bed. You can see this as a disadvantage because the print doesn't come off well immediately, but it's also an advantage. For example, if the printer shuts down due to a power failure, well then you can easily resume the print after this failure without the print coming off the bed. Prints that I made with Engine, a very nice copolymer from Colorfab, came out perfect from this printer. The used temperature of 240 degrees on the nozzle and 80 degrees on the bed are reached very quickly due to the mains powered heated bed, and well, they remain very stable. The engine adheres perfectly to the bed and prints effortlessly. For me, Engine is a perfect alternative to, for example, ABS, because it prints with the ease of PLA, it's very strong and it can withstand UV light. Moreover, you can let it become much warmer than PLA, so that you can use it for prints like, uh, for example, things that you use behind your car windows. Now, when I started testing with PAT and PATG, I came up with an unexpected result. Normally PAT and PATG adhere far too well to the print bed and you need to use glue or another dissolvable adhesive to ensure that you can dissolve the bond between the printed material and the bed. And in this case uh, the PAT and PATG did not adhere to the bed at all. I have not succeeded in making successful prints with PAT or PATG, and this was not due to the ability of the printer to melt the material or whatever, but rather due to the adhesion with this print bed. So I couldn't work with PAT or PATG. But in the time that I've been using this printer now, I can only say that I'm very satisfied with the results. The prints look very good and are made very quickly because the printer is extremely fast where with other printers I use a speed of 40 to 60 mm per second. With this printer I crank it up to even 100 mm per second for parts that have to look nice. The printer can handle it easily and it delivers perfect results even at those higher speeds. What I found even more important when we talk about speed is the speed of the Z-Hop. This printer can move along the Z-axis so quickly that you can easily speci uh, specify in your slicer that you want the Z-hop with every move, without making the prints much slower. This makes the prints much faster and much nicer than is the case with many other printers, and really it hops extremely fast. As for the leveling of the bed, well, I have only done this once since I got my printer. After putting the printer on the table, I set up the bed and well, after that I just didn't do anything about it. And now, more than a few months later, I still print on the same bed without any adjustments. So far I have only one other printer with which this has succeeded, and that's the Creality Ender 2, with its much smaller printer bed. Then, 
In terms of maintenance, I have not come across any crazy things with this printer. The printer functions as it should and well, it seems very reliable to me. I have not oiled it, I have yeah, I've only cleaned the bed, nothing more than that. Recently, this printer also got a smaller brother, the Genius. And this printer is now also en route to my studio for testing. As soon as the Genius is here, I'll of course review it, but I will also compare it to this printer because, well, hey, they are brothers. If you found this a useful review, then you are not the only one. Fortunately, there are still subscriptions available to my YouTube channel, but be quickly because they are sold out before you know it. A subscription is currently completely free, provided that you also press the bell icon, otherwise you will not know it if I make a new video. I would also love to see that you hit that like button, as then YouTube knows well that you love my videos and they spread the word that, yeah, that you love it. In the description there is also an affiliate link to this printer that you can use to buy it and you pay the normal price for this printer, however I will get a small percentage of the earnings and well my sponsors will know that you like my reviews and therefore they will send me other printers and such to review. So that's all. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye.